During the summer months, lowland resident kestrels are joined by hobbies, arriving from their African wintering grounds. Once considered a rarity of southern heathlands, hobby numbers have been increasing, and it is now encountered in a wide range of habitats in lowland England and Wales, with small numbers in Scotland. As is so often the case with raptors, we rarely see the birds well enough to rely on fine plumage details for identification. So how can we separate these similarly sized birds of prey? Kestrel is perhaps one of our most familiar raptors, small and elegant. It is found in a huge range of habitats, including farmland, villages and towns, but it generally avoids heavy woodland. Kestrels are often encountered hovering and, in Britain and Ireland, this behaviour immediately identifies them. If you see a hovering falcon alongside a road, for instance, it is a kestrel. Kestrels prey principally on invertebrates and small mammals, and as such, are sit and wait predators. If a perch is available and the bird does not need to hover, it prefers to sit out, watching for potential prey. And this means kestrels are often encountered perched out in the open, on posts, telegraph poles, dead tree snags, and even buildings and other human structures. Here, their characteristic shape can be studied. A small, neat head, rounded body, long wings, and an even longer tail. The wing tips end a long way before the tail tip. In good views, colour is discernible, and in kestrel, the key colour is a rich rufus. Females are creamy buff below and rich rufus above both being liberally marked with dark spots below and darker and paler marks above. From a distance, males look similar, but close views will reveal the males to have grey head and tail. Both sexes have a dark teardrop mark vertically through the eye, which on some birds, especially females, can be especially noticeable. In flight, from underneath, kestrels give a pale impression, except for a dark band at the end of the tail. And from above, the rufous back and wings contrast with the very dark outer wings. Again, the dark tail tip is often obvious. Many people are surprised to learn that hobby is actually a smaller bird than kestrel, but it has proportionally longer wings. In fact, the wings are longer than on a kestrel. This, combined with a proportionally shorter tail as well, gives a very different shape. Hobbies always give me the impression of being built for speed. Hobbies generally hunt flying prey and they are supremely adapted for catching their prey in the air. They are often encountered over wetland habitats where they acrobatically take dragonflies, catching them in their feet. They then characteristically hold the dragonfly forward to pluck the wings before eating it. As distinctive a behaviour as the kestrels hovering. Hobbies can and do tackle bird prey. Indeed, they are more than capable of taking swallows, martins and even swifts in an aerial chase. When hunting birds, their flight is direct, powerful and the wing beats clipped. The combination of a short inner wing and long pointed outer wing can make hobby appear almost like a giant swift. Some people say they look like anchors or even sickle shaped. Hobbies are incredibly agile in flight and will match their prey move for move. If you suddenly hear a commotion amongst swallows or even swifts in our cities, it's worth looking up for the characteristic shape of a hobby. Hobbies prefer to soar high looking for food and are much more rarely encountered perched. When seen seated, they're much less likely to be on an exposed perch, preferring a well-vegetated tree branch. When seen at rest, however, the proportions of hobby are very different to a kestrel with the wings easily reaching or even extending past the tail tip. At rest and in flight, hobbies are dark birds, dark slate grey above and white, but very heavily marked below, on the body and on the underwings. The white face stands out, contrasting with a heavily marked chest and set off by a black cap and face mask, leaving a characteristic white cheek, which can often be seen even from a distance. Another feature that can be surprisingly obvious is the red trousers. You can often catch a glimpse of them as a bird passes over. The red seems to be noticeable even when in shadow. The only likely confusion is young hobbies at the end of the summer. These are buff below and lack the distinctive trousers. 
but you should be able to pick these birds out by a combination of shape, behaviour and a combination of plain dark above and heavily marked below with the characteristic dark head and pale face pattern of the adults. <laughs>